It's good to see uh, good to see all you folks with us here today. Folks are looking forward to a a great season. Uh, just this time of year, kicking off the holidays and those kind of things. Uh, just good to see church family. Good to see some guests and. Uh, uh, also, good to see our, our Hispanic congregation. They're not, they're not guests by any stretch of the imagination. They just usually meet in a different, different place than we do, but it's good to have everybody in here together, worshiping together. For those of you who don't know, we do have, uh, we do have a, an Hispanic congregation that meets a couple of buildings over, and if you know anyone that, uh, that would prefer a, a service like that, then, uh, then let them know that they can, uh, they can certainly come here and worship God in that way. So uh, good to have y'all. Thank y'all for joining with us today. Uh, you know, uh, there is a, uh, uh, there is just something to be said about, uh, about grateful people, about people who are thankful. Uh, you, and you really don't know that until you meet someone who is not very grateful, until you meet someone who is ungrateful. And that, that kind of, it kind of shows through in a, in a lot of different ways, the difference between those two it, it might come in the restaurant, you know, when you have a server. Uh, do, you, do you hear somebody say thank you to the server? It might, uh, might just be somebody who opens a door. It might be when you give a gift, you know, or they, is, there, is there a thank you and those kinds of things. It's, it's not hard. You don't really have to go long before you can tell the difference between someone who is grateful and someone who is not. So a person who is who is unthankful? You got to think about the the origins of that. Some people, some people are just uh, they're, they're just I guess mindless when it comes to that. They don't they don't really think about it. Which uh, you know, there's I guess there's something to be said about that. But they just that doesn't really doesn't really register with them that they should be grateful. Other other folks are I don't really know how to I don't really know a nice way to say it other than they're just spoiled. They think that they they think that they deserve whatever it is that they're getting. But what I found is, is that ungrateful people, as they go through time, become bitter people. They're bitter, they're, they're unhappy. And I think that a, a great source of joy comes when we realize how much we have been blessed. How thankful we should be for people who are, uh, for people who are around us, for different things that people do, whether it's something small or something great. And I think that if we would begin to recognize the blessings that we have been given and and all that comes toward us, when we begin to recognize that, there just comes a sense of joy because we realize the blessings that are around us. Are there, a, I mean, are, are, there, are there bad things that happen? Sure there are. Are there negative things that are around us? Sure there are. But even in the midst of all that, we have so much to be thankful for that this time of year is a great time for us to, to highlight Thanksgiving in our lives. Now, my prayer is, is that Thanksgiving is not something that is relegated to uh, to a day or a week or even a month, but it's something that goes on in our lives 365 days a year because especially those of us who call upon the name of Christ, we have been given so much. Some of those things we recognize and, uh, and are, you know, wow moments for us and others, uh, other things are just things that we have every day that we simply take for granted like life, the fact that you're able to be in here, the fact that you can hear me or see me, those kinds of things, those are all blessings from the hand of God. Remember James chapter 1, uh, James said there that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. And so not only is there uh, an attitude of thanksgiving, an aura of thanksgiving that ought to be about us, but there is an object of thanksgiving that we recognize ultimately where every gift comes from. And that object, that, uh, that origin is none other than God himself, who I would, I would simply call King Jesus. Now, I want you to turn to your Bibles. I hope you got three things with you today. I hope you got your Bible. I hope you have one of the outlines when you came in. By the way, if you're, if you're new to in here, every time you come in, whether it's this way or this way, there are, uh, there are outlines, what we call growth guides, um, insight, manual insights. There are those, uh, those, those, I guess if you like to take notes or see notes, uh, those are available to you when you walk in. So I hope you got one of those. And I hope you have your cell phone. Now, how often are you going to hear a preacher say, I hope you have your cell phone and I want to encourage you to turn it on. Okay, so you can go ahead and do that. But now, turn it down. Okay, let's put it on vibrate. And, uh, and don't, you know, don't pull up Facebook, at least not yet. Don't pull up any games or 
any other uh, any of that kind of stuff. Don't don't start texting folks. Don't start texting me. I got my phone up here. Uh, I got my watch too, so it's gonna it's gonna mess me up if you start texting me a bunch. But uh, but hope you have those three things with you today. It's okay if you don't have them. We'll uh, you'll you'll still be able to follow along. But I think that will help it make it a little bit more meaningful in the next uh, 25 to 30 minutes. All right. So I want you to turn your Bibles, if you're there, I want you to turn in your Bibles to, uh, and you've got it there if you've got your outline, First Chronicles chapter 16. Chapter 16. If God is the object, is supposed to be the object of our thanksgiving, how are we going to express our thanksgiving to King Jesus? Some people have a hard time expressing thanksgiving, at least in the right way. I, I, I read one time about a generous donation to uh, way back when, a generous donation to Bob Dole's political campaign by a man named Irv Raston. And so uh, Irv Raston received a Thanksgiving note from, uh, from the campaign of Bob Dole. And it started out like this, Dear Cheeto's Breath, uh, Apparently, something kind of got mixed up in the wires by a staffer who was promptly fired. Sometimes we don't really know how to express thanksgiving. But I think that we have for us a story in First Chronicles that is going to help us learn how it is that we can express thanksgiving that is fit for a king. Now, you've got to know a little bit of the background before we read through this uh, big hymn of thanksgiving. And it's all about the ark. The Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was something very special to God's people. It's very special to the Israelites. And whenever the Ark was in their presence, they could go into battle and they would win that battle because the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God. So it was very, very important to them. Now, the Ark of the Covenant one day was, uh, because they had sinned against God, that Ark of the Covenant was was, uh, captured by the enemies of God's people. And sure enough, when, when that ark was in the presence of those enemies, man, they, they won a couple of battles with it in their presence as well. But it was, it was, uh, it was in the presence of the Philistines, and, uh, and eventually the Israelites won that thing back. Have you ever, uh, it, it's kind of like, uh, uh, it, it became a source of, uh, of negativity for God's enemies. It was something that was negative for them, and so they wanted to get rid of it. They gave it back to the Israelites. And the Israelites wanted to get it to the right place. They wanted to get it back to Jerusalem. And it took a little while to get there. There, was a, there were some things that happened. You can read uh, chapters 14 and 15 and, and some of the background. But, but they were really trying to get the ark to the right place. And finally, they set up, this, uh, they set up the, the plan how they were going to parade this ark into the city of Jerusalem. And when they do that, it becomes a source of great celebration for them. And their hearts are overflowing, and they want to they want to have this uh, this big this big to do kind of like kind of like what we're going to be doing this afternoon. We're going to come in here together as a as a church family. We're going to celebrate the season and and kind of kick off the season like that. This was going to be an even on an even grander scale. The whole nation was going to come together and have a big huge Thanksgiving. And so they have this uh, they have this hymn of Thanksgiving that they are going to proclaim that they proclaim at this time where they are bringing the ark back to where it should be in the first place. And this, this psalm of thanksgiving begins in verse 8 of 1 Chronicles chapter 16. And so we're going to read through that and then we'll go back and make a few points about how we can express our thanksgiving to King Jesus. Beginning in verse 8, it says, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, speak of all his wonders. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his wonderful deeds which he has done, his marvels and the judgments from his mouth. O seed of Israel, his servant, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Remember his covenant forever, the word which he he commanded to a thousand generations the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac. He also confirmed it, confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan as the portion of your inheritance. When they were only a few, a few in number, very few, and strangers in it, and they wandered about from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another people. 
He permitted no man to oppress them, and he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, strength and joy are in his place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name, bring an offering and come before him, worship the Lord in holy array. Tremble before him all the earth. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. And let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea roar in all it contains. Let the field exult in all that is in it. Then the trees of the forest will sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Then say, save us, O God of our salvation, and gather us and deliver us from the nations to give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting even to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. This is a great psalm of thanksgiving, and it teaches us how we can express thanksgiving that is fit for a king. Now, I hope you have your outline there. If you have it and you're taking a few notes, if you don't, if, you know, if note taking in your thing, don't worry about it. But if you like taking notes so you can rem- remember a little bit later on, here are four ways that we can express our thanksgiving. The first that you have there, the first line is that we want to brag on King Jesus. We want to brag on him. You find that you can, uh, we won't go through and read all that again, but you can read verses 8 and 9 and verses 23 and 24, and they're going to brag on their king. First of all, first of all, the way that we're going to brag on him is we are going to praise his name. We are, in, in other words, we are going to brag on him to him. We're going to proclaim how great he is as we talk to him. We're going to tell God just how great God is. Now, I want you to see the setup for this scene, where this, where this is all, this is really have, have been planned from beforehand. Look at, back, look at back at chapter 15. If you're there in chapter 16, look back at, at chapter 15 and in verse 16. He says, Then David spoke to the chiefs, the Levites, to appoint their relatives, the singers, with instruments of music, high, uh, harps, lyres, loud sounding cymbals to raise sounds of joy. Skip over to verse 27. Now David was clothed with a robe of, of fine linen, with all the Levites who were carrying the ark, and the singers, and Chenaniah, the leader of the singing, with the singers. In other words, this was the mark. This was the, the, uh, the minister of music, the, the worship pastor. David also wore an ephod of linen. Of linen. Thus all Israel brought up, the, brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouting and with sounds of the horn, with trumpets, with loud sounding cymbals, with harps and lyres. Listen, they, they pulled out every instrument they could find. They even, listen now, don't, don't let this uh, make you gasp too hard. They even had their drums out. They brought every instrument they could find and they put it to use in worshiping God. I know everybody has different tastes. I know everybody has different opinions. But let me just tell you, it is something, it is something biblical to bring out every single instrument that you can find to lift up the name of the Lord. They were planning for this time. This was, what was, this was setting the scene for them to brag on Him to Him. I read one time about a, a large dog and he walked into a, he walked into a butcher, shop, butcher shop and he was... He was carrying a, a purse in his mouth. And so the butcher looked down at him and said, what, what is it, boy? You know, kind of joking around like, you know, what do you want, like, like the dog was going to really talk to him. Wanna, you want to buy some meat? And the dog says, woof. <laughs> kind of took him back a little bit. He said, mm, well, well, what kind? You want, you want liver? You want bacon? You want, you want steak? And at that point, the dog said, woof. 
like, I won't stay. And so he was like, oh, now this is, this is getting kind of weird. He's like, well, how, how, much, how much steak do you want? You want half a pound? You want, you want one pound? Woof! This butcher was really impressed. Like, he's communicating with him. So the butcher, he wraps up the meat, and he goes and he finds, looks in the purse and that the, that the dog is carrying and gets out the money that is required to pay for it. And so the dog takes off and is leaving with this, with this, uh, with this meat in the purse. And so the butcher's like, well, I need to... I want to check this out. And so he, he decides he's going to follow the dog. And he follows the dog, and, and the dog goes into an apartment house, and he climbs up to the, the third floor, and he begins to scratch on the door. And with that, the door swings open, and this angry man walks out and begins to yell at the dog. And the butcher's like, no, no, stop, stop. What are you doing? He, that's the most intelligent animal I have ever seen in my life. The man says, intelligent? This is the third time this week that he has forgotten his keys. You know, sometimes we just overlook the obvious. We become so used to certain things that we don't really even see them anymore. And I believe that's, that's the case with a lot of blessings that are around us, with how much God has blessed us with. And we become so used to it that we become immune and we don't even appreciate what God has set right in front of us. We should brag on Him to Him. We should praise His name, but we should also proclaim his fame in other words we should brag on him to others we also find that in verses 8 and 9 verses 23 and 24 we should proclaim his fame and tell other people just how good God is now we hesitate to do that in a lot of ways even around the dinner table this Thursday might be kind of awkward sometimes. Well, how has God blessed you? Well, uh, but it's not always that awkward. If you have your phone and, uh, and you do Facebook, if you do Facebook, I want you to pull that up right now. Can, I, can you believe? Has, have, has a preacher ever said pull up Facebook? I want you to pull up Facebook. Yours. If you do it. And if you don't do it, that's fine. Just, just chill out. You'll, you'll, you'll be able to do this like in your own way, in a different way. I just, I just want to show you how, really how easy this is if you want to do it. We want to proclaim his fame. We want to brag on God to other people. Facebook is an easy way to do that. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to pull up, uh, where I want you to create a post. That's what I, I'm doing it right here. I'm doing it right here with you, right in front of you. So if this goes south, it's going to, you know, I'm going to go south with you, okay? And so here's what I want you to do. I just want you, simply want you to pull up a post, and I want you to si simply just say something like, uh, uh, God has blessed me by. That's what I've got so far. God has blessed me by or with, and then I want you to finish that sentence. I want you to finish the sentence. However you want to finish that sentence. I'm doing it right now. Uh, let's see. I, and Let's see. I've got that. And I'm just doing this right here with you. Y'all working on it? Y'all doing this? Or is it just me? Come on. And... Hold on, I'm almost finished. Y'all almost finished? Y'all with me? Y'all left me. Okay. There we go. And if you don't mind, and, and what you can do, you can, um, you can also you can tag the church to that. That would be great. Well, I'm not going to do that right now because it's messing up, but anyway. <laughs> Y'all can do this at home too. So uh, I'm going to go back and I'll, I'll add that when I have more time. Now, I have just posted that, and now, guess what? The entire world, I've got, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not nearly as big as some of y'all. I've got a little over, I guess, 500 friends or so on Facebook. And so I have just proclaimed to the world, to anybody that wants to see, I have proclaimed to them in one way how good God is. You can do that every single week. I know some people have, they take the month of November and they talk about these are the number of ways that uh, these are the number of things that I'm thankful for. Listen, let me encourage you. If you're going to do that, that's great. That's fine. And we want to be thankful and we want to encourage other, other people to be thankful. I want to encourage you to specifically include God in your thanksgiving. Because you want to remember yourself. You want to remember where your blessings come from. But you also want other people to know this. You want to proclaim to other folks, this is where, this is the source of goodness in my life. It is God. So, you want to praise his name, 
and you want to proclaim his fame. The first thing we want to do, if we want to, if we want to give a thanksgiving that is fit for a king, is we want to brag on Jesus. Number two, second thing that we find that's taking place in this psalm, and that is we want to seek King Jesus. We want to sing, keep, seek King Jesus, and you can find that in verses 10 and 11 and as well as in other places throughout this psalm. L- listen, we search for things. We look for things that are important to us. We just do. And we go after them. We pursue them no matter what the cost. It might be, it might be at, the, at the expense of our physical well-being if it matters to us. There are people who are my age and older who will climb to the, mount, to the top of a very large mountain, and many people gave their life to do that. They died on the way up to Kilimanjaro. And it's all because it's something that was very important to them. They will, they will risk their physical well-being. They'll pay the price if it matters enough. They'll go on vacations that extend their budget a great deal. Things that they could spend that money on something else. They're willing, to set, they're willing to sacrifice and not get this and not go here and not eat that so that they can save money to go on a particular vacation. Or they'll devote the time. I mean, they'll give up all the time in the world to, uh, to, go, to, uh, to go to a sporting event. I mean, they'll, everything, will, everything will move off of their calendar so that they can go to a particular sporting event or so that they can go hunting. They'll, I mean, they will, they'll get up at 4 o'clock in the morning when they normally would not get up at 4 o'clock in the morning so that they can go and see an animal that has antlers and shoot that thing down and put it on their wall. I mean, we'll, we'll devote time and resources and even our own physical well-being in order to pursue certain things. Jesus, listen to me, Jesus is worth all of that. We should seek out King Jesus. Now, three ways that we can do that. And this is what those little arrows are uh, for, uh, th- that are, if you're following in your outline. Three ways that we can seek out King Jesus. And, and, and nothing new here, nothing revolutionary here. Very simple, but it's an encouragement for us to remember to seek King Jesus. Number one is in the Bible. Just write out the word Bible. We're in the midst now of a 90-day reading plan. 90-day reading plan. We started this over 60 days ago. This past Thursday was day number 60. Now, we just want people to be in the Word. We just want people reading the Bible. So, if uh, let, let me give an encouragement. Some people in here, you started out with that. Uh, you started out in that reading plan. We started out in Matthew chapter one. We're going to end in Acts chapter one uh, toward the middle of next month. And there are some people who got in that plan and they kind of got off course. They skipped a day or they missed out on a day, and so that one day turned into two days, turned into three days. And after a while, you're like, ah, you know, I just. Uh, I, I, I just miss so much, I'm just, gonna, I'm just not even going to worry about it anymore. Don't, listen, don't do that. Can I just tell you, that is the devil talking to you. You may say, well, but I like, I like starting in one place, you know, and reading the whole thing. I understand that. I get that. But all that, that that's only the devil saying that you don't need this word. If you, if you have gotten off, uh, off chart, you've got off course, listen, today, today is John chapter 15. Isn't that right? Isn't John chapter 15? It's not John? 19. 19. John chapter 19. Start today and go through the rest of it. It's okay. You'll still still get about 25 days in. Just do it. Get in the Bible. Seek God in His Word. The the uh, The second arrow, just as simple, and that is prayer. The Bible is where God speaks to you. Prayer is when you speak to God. You are simply having a conversation. You want to seek God out in His Word. You want to seek God out in prayer. And then number three, number three is meditation. And I don't mean transcendental meditation. I don't mean, you know, thinking through things at work. I'm talking about about your prayer and your Bible study. Now listen, have you ever had a conversation with someone kind of a long conversation with someone, and in the days following that conversation, you pre-played through that conversation? I do that all the time. I mean, I think about like what I said, what they said, what was the reaction, 
what I should have said different, you know, how could I, how could I have, you know, gone this, whether, whether it was a good or bad conversation, doesn't matter. I still think about how I could have improved on that conversation. What, you know, what did I, what did I forget about and those kind of things. Listen, can I tell you? That is meditation. When you simply take the conversation that God, uh, when God spoke to you through His Word, and when you spoke to Him through prayer, and you're rehashing that in your mind, that is what meditation is. And listen, that is where the best growth in your spiritual life is going to come from. So you want to pray, you want to get in His Word, and you want to meditate on it. You want to seek King Jesus. Number three. If we are going to have a Thanksgiving that is fit for a king, we want to remember King Jesus. You want to write down verses 12 through 22. This is where we remember King Jesus. Now, what is it that we're going to remember? Three things we're going to remember that are there. Uh, the, the, those are the blanks there in your outline, the little arrows. Number one, we're going to remember his wonders. That's what it tells us in verse 12. Remember his wonders. saw a question not too long ago that really, really kind of stung and it might sting you as well. What if all you had today was what you thanked God for yesterday? We should be thanking God. He has done wonders. He has done amazing things in our lives. And this is where, you know, we have the hymn, Count Your Many Blessings, Name Them One by One. This is where that takes place. We recount, we remember His wonders and the great things that He's done in our life. Number two, we remember His Word. We remember His Word. I, I mentioned not too long ago, maybe when we were talking about, uh, I guess it was when we were talking, introducing this 90-day reading plan, how Amos prophesied a famine of the Word, where that Word would be taken away and people would be searching for His Word. They would want to hear from God and God would shut it up and say, nope, you're not going to hear from me today. And sometimes, in, a, in an odd sort of way, sometimes... Sometimes I wish we just had a small taste of that for a short amount of time. Because I think with the, with the proliferation of Bibles in our, in our land, you know, still the, the greatest selling book every single year, with as many Bibles as we have, sometimes I wonder if we take it for granted. And, and you know the old saying, sometimes you, you don't know what you got till it's gone. And sometimes I wonder if it would do us good to just not hear from God for a day so we can realize what we are missing what we, and what we have here in front of us. And so we should be thanking God and remembering God for His Word. And then finally, there we should remember King Jesus for His watch, His looking out after us. I mean, you would not have, we would not have all that we have today if it wasn't for God watching over us and protecting us. So if we're going to have Thanksgiving fit for a king, we're going to brag on King Jesus. We're going to seek King Jesus. We're going to remember King Jesus. And then finally, we're going to give to King Jesus. I read about, read about a family that was going home from church and mom and dad were kind of, they were complaining a little bit about the service. I didn't, I didn't like that song selection today. Man, the instrumentalists, they were hitting a few bad notes and, Ooh, that preacher, man, he was, he was terrible. And they just kind of complained about the service. And then the little boy from the back seat, he kind of piped up and he says, well, you know, it really wasn't all that bad for the dollar that you put in the offering plate. <laughs> it's always been God's design that we give based on what we think of Him. That's the design. And I want you to just quickly listen to the motivation of these biblical characters who gave and why they gave. It was out of worship that Abel gave his first fruits to God. It was out of allegiance that Abraham tithed to Melchizedek. It was out of a sense of awe and impression that the queen lavished Solomon with gifts. It was out of obedience that Malachi called for a tithe to the people. It was out of repentance that Zacchaeus returned what he had taken to, to people fourfold. It was out of sacrifice that the widow offered her last two coins. It was out of duty that Jesus commanded the disciples to pay God and the government. It was out of joy that the churches of Macedonia 
presented money to Paul. And here we had, have out of thanksgiving that they brought their offerings to God. Now, I want you to hear this list again. Aren't these, just think about this, aren't these like a natural part of our walking with God? Worship, allegiance, impression, obedience, repentance, sacrifice, duty, joy, and thanksgiving. Aren't those, aren't those a normal part of our walk with God? Then so should our giving be. We should give to King Jesus, and that's what we read about there in verse 29. You want thanksgiving that is fit for a king? You want to know how to, how to thank God properly? You brag on him. You seek him. You remember him and what he's done. And you give to him. That is how they did it. And it's a great formula for how we should do it. Thanksgiving comes when our hearts are connected to that which gave to us. The only connection that we can really have with God is through His Son, Jesus Christ. That's not, not because that's what I believe. It's not because that's how I set things up. That's what God said. God said, you want to you have a relationship with me, it's only going to come through Jesus Christ. If you've never repented of your sins, called upon Him to save you from your sins, recognizing that He died for your sins and rose again on the third day, if that's never been a part of your life, you're not connected to God. Again, that's... That's, that's simply what he told us. And so if you've never done that, I want to invite you to call upon him today. Confess your sin. Acknowledge them before him. Recognize that he rose, that he died on the, on the cross, rose again on the third day, that he did that for you, and ask him to save you from your sin, to be the Lord and Savior of your life. You can do that right there in your seat. I'm about to pray out loud in just a second. You can pray silently to God. And you might say, well, what is prayer? Prayer is just like quietly talking to God. You might not, it might feel weird. It is weird the first time you do it. First few times you do it. You feel like you're talking into the air. And so it's, you simply tell God, God, this feels kind of strange. I feel like I'm talking to the air. But by faith, I believe that you hear me. By faith, I believe that your son died. By faith, I receive you. And I believe that you will save me. And when you do that, the Bible says that he will save you. And he'll give you a brand new life. Now, if you choose to do that, I want to encourage you to come and, come and share that. Talk, talk with me about that. Come, you, can, you can come and see me today. I'm going to be down over here for, for several different reasons. You can come and talk with me today. Or you can you know, that, that number that we presented at the very beginning, the 912-513-2929, it's there in, in the bulletin that you are in the, in the little info sheet that you got on the way in. You can simply text the word RESPONSE. To that same number and that text will come to me and that'll begin a conversation with you and me you can just say hey man I, I, I think I accepted Jesus I'm not really sure I, I, I think I asked him I, th I think I got saved today whatever it is you can do that and that will come to me and that will you and I can start a conversation about what it means to be a follower of his otherwise I think the uh, I think this passage has been simple for us to understand how we can express our thanksgiving to God let's go to him now and begin to do that. Lord, we do thank you. You are, you are good. You continue to be good. You are, uh, you've been good throughout all of history. You were good, especially when you sent Jesus and offered him to us. And Lord, we, uh, we thank you for the salvation that, uh, that, that he has brought with him. And I pray for anyone in the sound of my voice who has never experienced that salvation. They might have experienced religion. They may have experienced church, but they've never really experienced Jesus. I pray that they would call upon you today and have, a, have the greatest reason for thanksgiving that they've ever known. God, for those of us who are saved, for those of us who are your children, I pray that you would open up our hearts to a greater gratitude. Whatever little level of thanksgiving we've had before, I pray that it would deepen and that we would be able to express that to you and to those who are around us. Help us to be thankful people. In Jesus' name, amen. We invite you to stand, and uh, back several years ago, there's a wonderful song of thanksgiving written called 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Let's sing that together as we close our service this morning.
Right, two two things to make things a little bit smoother uh, from here on out. First of all, you heard um, in the announcements this morning that we would be ha- that we had the 
uh, proposed budgets for next year are going to be available to you. So we're going to have people standing at both doors. I see somebody back there. Is somebody up here? Anybody up here yet? Somebody is? Okay. Uh, oh, stands up here. So, uh, so you can take those on your way out. We are asking to just take one per family. That will just kind of help uh, with the printing and make sure they, they go further. Um, now, here's what's going to happen with those. You're going to have those next Sunday, next Sunday morning, right after church. We're going to have a question and answer time. If you have any questions about that budget, we were going to, we're, right after the service is over, we're going to come right behind here into the, into the uh, uh, choir room back here, and you can ask whatever questions you might have about that budget. The following Wednesday, on December the 1st, right before our Wednesday Night Live over here, we're going to have another question and answer session so that you can have all of your questions answered before we come to a vote. That vote will be on December the 5th. That's in two weeks is when we'll have that vote. And so we, we simply, we've got... We want to be transparent. We want to make sure that, uh, that you understand what's in that budget and those kind of things. So we do that uh, as a, uh, in order for, for us to be transparent. So take advantage of that. Get those on the way out, and uh, we'll have that vote in two weeks. Now, for those of you who are here for the meal, we're very excited about our Thanksgiving meal. Uh, it, we, did have to have, we did have to do reservations so that we would know how much food to cook and those kind of things. If you did not make a reservation but you would like to eat, I want you to come over here. I'm going to be standing right over here in this corner. I want you, I'm like a, like a person who's in trouble or something like that. I'm going to be standing over in the corner. I want you to come over and talk with me. So I, I, didn't, I didn't do a reservation, but I'd like to come. Come and talk with me, okay? Don't just walk out. If you want to come and eat with us, have a, have a fellowship meal, come and talk with me. Otherwise, if you're here for the meal and you've already signed up and all that kind of stuff, go out there. We're going to say the blessing in here. So when you walk over in there, you can go straight into the line, grab your food, and go have a seat. And we're just going to have a great time of fellowshipping together. Is that cool? Did I say everything I needed to say? Okay. All right. And all of y'all are being like, yeah, you did. Shut up. Okay. So anyway, Mark, if, you will, uh, if you'll say the blessing for us today, and then we'll come over and have a great time of fellowship. Lord, we just come before you again, and we just offer thanks for all that you have done for us. We thank you for our church family, the opportunity to fellowship together today. We thank you for those who have worked so hard to make this happen. And uh, Lord, we just pray that it, it can be a wonderful time of enjoying the church family that you have blessed us with, Lord. And may it just be a wonderful, wonderful time to gather today. We ask your blessings on the food, and uh, Lord, may it uh, benefit each of us, and uh, we thank you again. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.